line, Mr. Adam Hill um, from ESPN Radio Las Vegas. He's a writer for the Las Vegas Review Journal. You cover the Raiders. You cover the Golden Knights. You cover UNLV. You cover it all. How's it going, Adam Hill? What's up, everybody? I'm Allie Burns from Picks and Parlays. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. That way you never miss our new show, the NFL Power Hour, every Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. I am good, and I have a bit of a hostage video background going on here, but I mean, I'm, I'm like in the back room at the team facility here, so uh, just try to make this happen. Hopefully it works out. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm so happy you could take the time to come on the show and say what's up. You are kind of like the uh, go-to guy for all things Raiders right now. So what are you doing right now? You're at the practice facility. Tell yeah. us what, what's going on there. So uh, first first training camp practice was this morning. So out on the field, got to uh, experience the, I don't know, it was only about 106. wasn't quite 115 yet. So it was nice that they practiced in the morning. And then uh, Coach McDaniels with his first presser of the training camp and a couple of players spoke to us as well. So. Uh, got things going uh, pretty quickly. We did have some interviews yesterday uh, as players arrived, but today was the first day on the field. And then I uh, came in here and stacked up like eight programs and like a Kleenex box and tried to rig up a uh, a little uh, set to come talk to you. Nice. <laughs> I appreciate it. So what's the biggest buzz at the Raiders training camp? What's going on? I mean, it's Devontae Adams would be one of my first guesses that everyone's very excited about him joining our team. Uh, what What's the word on the on the field. Yeah, it's 17. Uh, Devontae Adams, of course, running through his first rounds. And we got to see him in OTAs and minicamp and that sort of thing. But uh, the first, you know, full training camp practice with the team, I think all eyes were on him early on. And then uh, how the offensive line is going to sort out. I think that's that's number two. So uh, when the offensive line started lining up, it's everybody just hustling over, trying to get the best view they can of who's lining up at right tackle. Uh, is it Alex Leatherwood? Uh, who's it going to be? And uh, today, for the most part, it was Alex Leatherwood. So that's that's the number two thing people are watching here at camp. And then after that, it's just, you know, the normal things. How do the quarterbacks look? Everybody loves to look at how the quarterbacks are throwing as if uh, something they do on the first day of training camp is going to uh, affect uh, how we see them during the season. Um, that's silly. But, yeah, that's, you know, everybody likes to see the quarterbacks throw. And that's uh, that's always a big focus. So David Carr really impressed me last season. I haven't, like, typically been a David Carr fan my entire life. Uh, or is it Derek Carr? Sorry. Derek. This one's Derek. Yeah, David, I'm I'm a Houston Texans fan, and David Derek. played for my Texans, which is part of why I never was into Derek, because David wasn't great on my team. Um, but Derek really impressed me last season, especially with Gruden being out, especially with the rug situation that we had. Um, I really felt like he kind of put that team on his back and did the very best he could. What do you expect to see out of him this season? Well, I mean, this is the year, right? I mean, last year he, he had a lot of good things in place, and he mentioned there was a lot of bad things too, and he had to navigate and figure out a way to navigate them through that. And I think that was the best thing that he did is to figure out how to not let the team fall apart uh, through all the things that happened last year. But this year, I mean, so far, none of those things have happened, and everything you could possibly want is in place. I mean, there are questions on the offensive line, but you've got unbelievable stable of running backs. You've got maybe the best wide receiver core as a whole when you include the tight end in the entire league. Um, and you've got all these things in place. And Josh McDaniels, who has a pretty good track record as a as a uh, offensive coordinator and now head coach uh, in the NFL, so that Patriot staff is in place. Everything's there. Like, there's not much more you can ask for. So if things don't go unbelievably well this year, it's all on Derek Carr. But he has kind of taken that on, on himself and said, yeah, I understand that. I get that. None of the excuses that they've had in the past are there. So this is kind of a do-or-die season. So as far as the season win total is concerned, I, I know I didn't tell you to come prepared with this, but I know oh, you're sharp and, sure. and uh, you can make something up quick. <laughs> but eight and a half is the season win total. It's under eight and a half. Is it even money? The over is at minus 120. Are we making the playoffs? Do you think it goes over? How? What do you think on this? What would your play be? So the, the first thing I want to say is I think a lot of people look at this and say, well, they won 10 games and went to the playoffs last year and they got better. How could that not happen again? And I think that's the kind of the common thing that's out there. Now, I'll say this. I'm, I'm not making my play right now. I'll do it get to that in a second. But I'll say I think there's a very, very, very good chance that this team is significantly better than they were last year and their record is worse. Like th That is possible. Wow. I don't know if that's hard for people to understand, but I think they can take big steps forward in terms of how good of a team. Because last year, let's face it, they weren't a good team. Mm -hmm. They had a horrific schedule that good they somehow home. managed. Yeah, they somehow managed to get through a schedule that was just easy and they found a way to win enough games, especially some close games late and a couple of maybe fluky games. Um, so, yeah, I, I think 
this team is going to be dramatically better on the field. And I don't think they're going to have the same record because that schedule is much, much tougher this year. Now, we talk about Kansas City's schedule. Kansas City may have the toughest schedule in NFL history, by the way. Uh, if you if you really start to break it down and look uh, at who they're playing, when they're playing, where they're playing, that schedule is brutal. The Raiders isn't very far behind. It's a very similar schedule to what the Chiefs are playing now. Not quite as bad, but it's really, really tough. And uh, I just think it's going to be very difficult for this team to get the same amount of wins that they did last year. Uh, and still, you know, it, you know, and still navigate that schedule, which they, uh, you know, is a different scenario than it was last year. Now, that being said, I think they win nine. So I'm not going to go, I'm not going to, you know, come out here and say they're going to blow this out of the water. It's way too low. Like, I think the number's right. I think they win right around that number of games. And of course, things can go right or wrong. And you win a game or two here, a bad call here or there, an injury here and there changes yeah. how the season looks. But um, right now, if you may be to pick a record, I'd say it's nine and eight. So I think they go very slightly over, but I'm I'm certainly not going to make any strong plays for anybody and say you have to bet this over uh, on this team. Uh, and usually, here's the thing: I'm almost always in any future bet. I'm always always look almost always looking to take the under. Um, I just think things can go wrong much more than they can go right uh, to get you off of what the projections are. Uh, but in this case, I I do think nine is is manageable and doable, and they're going to have to find a way to win at least two games in the division. Uh, which if you go two and four in the division, you're actually doing something right because this is brutal. Um, and then, you know, find ways to win those games outside the division, which, you know, there's some tough ones, but there's also, you know, things like, you know, teams that are not going to be quite as good as maybe they have been in the past and uh, got a couple of breaks with some road trips. So we'll see how it works out. But I think nine and eight is about right. All right. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, we know that the odds makers know that the betting public likes to bet overs. And with 10 wins last season, I'm kind of surprised it's not more out of nine just because the public overreacts to things like that. I agree. I think the number is right on right here and stinks about having such a tough schedule, but it'll be an exciting year for the Raiders. You know, nonetheless, I'm just really excited to see. I can't even believe I'm saying that because I'm so not a Raiders fan. Sorry, Las Vegas, but it's from back when you were not in Las Vegas. It doesn't mean I just have to like you because now you're here, does it? But I will no. say you're kind of wearing on me, like you're kind of grinding me down, and I might like you a little now. We'll, well see at the end of the season. <laughs> sure, I mean it's it's like people it's like people that are just around you uh, that you're that you get familiar with, and all of a sudden like that person's not that bad, I guess. Yeah, like, I mean, that's, that's kind of how it is. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> put on a good show for us at home. I mean, hey, yeah. you know, don't hate no. it. I will say, I think the Raiders are only favored in six games at this point. Now, a couple of them are, are like real close, one here, there, either way. So, you know, it, it's going to be a grind. If you're going to bet this team over, it's going to be a grind all year to hope they can pull a couple upsets here and there. But most of their games really, uh, outside of, you know, the, the really tough schedule games on the schedule, are between like three uh, either way. So a lot of close games are, potential, are potentially there. Uh, there's some games you can steal, but also games that you might think you're going to win and you end up losing. Right. And that's that's the nature of the beast, isn't it? Sure. That's just how we roll. That's why they let you bet on it, because anything can happen. Exactly. Adam Hill, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really, really appreciate it. I hope I can have you back on throughout the season. And also, you can pop on my Morning Woods show sometime uh, when you're a little less busy with training camps. I understand. <laughs> you're the man of the hour right now. You're in high demand. <laughs> so, sounds good. Good talking to you as always. Thank you.